Hello everyone, Father Leo here, and no, I'm not in a kitchen, but I'm definitely in a place where a lot of God's children are fed. We are on a special edition, on a pilgrimage, so to speak, with Savoring Our Faith, standing right at the corner of Via Conciliazione, the way of reconciliation that leads to Mother Church, St. Peter's Basilica. Underneath this dome, St. Peter's bones are buried, and these colonnades extending out from Bernini, like arms of a mother, reaching out to her children and the saints that are all on top, that's exactly what we're called to be. And if we can find our way to be reconciled with God and His church, we will be fed. Our next stop is gonna be actually at the Appian Way where a road will eventually lead to Rome with a fantastic story. And because pilgrims need to be fed, there's also a fantastic restaurant that will keep us strong in body. And yes, with this show, strong in faith, feeding you body, mind, and spirit. So stick around for a special edition of Savoring Our Faith on EWTN. So here we are right on the Via Appia, the ancient Appian Road. When we talk about all roads leading to Rome, this is one of them. As a matter of fact, down here, down this street right in front of me is a little chapel that designates an area where St. Peter was trying to leave Rome, but then he encounters the Lord and he asks that famous question, Domine quo vadis, Lord, where are you going? Because he was trying to escape by way of the catacombs. In fact, this is one of them. St. Sebastian Catacomb, you'll see that you have to go down to it, to the ancient Rome, where a couple miles away from this uh, Basilica of St. Peter's, they had all of the burial spots for all the ancient Romans. And this road, being one of the ancient roads, is the ways that Christians came in and out. In fact, this is the road that we would follow on our pilgrimages to the different holy shrines in the area. But after a hard day of pilgrimage, after a long day of travel, and obviously a lot of prayers, we need to be sustained. So after I make a little stop here at the catacombs, I wanna make a stop to this road right across the street where I'm gonna be visiting a great restaurant and be fed with things that are gonna help me continue on our pilgrimage way. We are in the only restaurant in all of Italy that has this specialty, specialty pasta called Scrigno. And we've got Chef Claudio here who handles all of the first courses for this restaurant called Cecilia Matella, which is really close to the tomb of uh, Cecilia Matella, as well as St. Cecilia, as well as right around the corner from all the catacombs. And he's gonna teach us how to make this. Oh gosh, now the bacon is kind of rendered out and a little bit of the butter. Let's just add some cream. Makes it all the more delicious. Look at that. Perfectly measured, a little bit of salt and uh, c'è pepe anche? No, no, no pepper. Okay, oh here we go. A little bit of nutmeg, just grinding a little bit of nutmeg on there. That's an interesting concept. I was always wondering what that floral quality was to it as well. Okay, and then what always? Oh, and he's gonna wait till it boils a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to make the pasta. Now this stuff, he's got groups of people who make it. Per look, perfectly measured. I, I, am, I am in a little bit of food heaven right now. Yeah, I can honestly say so many of my friends, he just threw it in there. He commanded, he just threw it in there just to boil that up. And it takes only a few minutes because it's a fresh pasta. And he's got it already in some beautifully hot boiling water. Che sale in acqua. So he's got so he's got a little bit of salt in this water to give some flavor to the pasta as well. Now he's letting this continue to cook out. And first of all, for me to be in this kitchen 
is pretty fantastic. This is almost a pilgrimage in and of itself. And why? Because when I was a student, we would do a humongous tour around the city, visiting the various sites. And this was one of the places that we'd visit during Lent. And there was a great Monsignor who would take all of the pilgrims on this humongous pilgrimage to the various shrines. We would eat here. And this is, this pasta is what s sustained us physically so that we could make it to the next stop. Unfortunately, however, I have to admit, after eating this pasta, I just wanted to take a nap. So what we've got, he's going to be breaking up. Because he's already cut the pasta almost in these, uh, in four particular portions, okay, I will admit, I am now getting super hungry. My jaws just opened up. I can actually feel the hunger pangs in my stomach. And this brings me back to the days where me and my, my friends and myself and, and, and a lot of priests, we would all get together, no doubt, just to spend time with each other. If we had a day away, we could, we could visit the city, we could go to the catacombs, and more importantly, we can develop the fraternity and the friendship around a beautiful meal like this. Perfectly apportioned. He's adding a little bit of the cream to it. Look, he's even made three portions for the Trinity. Look at that. I love this. This is just the only, the, the, the only thing next. He's going to put a little bit of mozzarella. See, and he just julienned it. And this is uh, no mozzarella de buffalo, vero? Okay, this is not the mozzarella of buffalo. Yep, okay. So he's got, this is just uh, water. This has got a little bit of, che uh, cosa dentro? Okay, so just simply uh, egg as well as um, flour. So he's got this all cut up. It's going to fit perfectly into t to top it off. I always wondered what that was on top of there. Now I know. And you know one of the things that we got to do is if we want to learn something, we just have to ask. We honestly thought that this was a secret, and it's not. He's showing it to us. Putting a little bit of... Uh, we've got some just tomato sauce that he's just putting on top of there. Oh my gracious. Again, a little bit more... A little bit for, for, uh, Parmesan cheese right on top. That's it? And now... Yeah, we are ready. Va bene. Aiuto. This is... This is beautiful. He's been here for 30 years and he's seen a lot of people come and go from pilgrims to the most powerful, from cardinals to, to politicians to actors like Anthony Quinn, Liz Taylor, Anthony Burton, so many other people, including our very own Cardinal Dolan of New York City, who says this is one of his favorite restaurants. And I can tell you the Cardinal has great faith and also great test, taste in, in restaurants because of people like uh, this Chef Pasquale. Okay, here we go. This is the reveal after about eight, nine, oh my gracious, this is exactly how I remember it. And so he's got this on a, puts it on a plate, it's still bubbling, and obviously they might even say this in some restaurants, be careful, that's hot. It's very obvious because the, uh, the panna continued to cook. This beautiful caramelization of the tomato sauce on top of this little pasta right here. You can see a little bit of the green spinach coming through. So it's almost like the, the colors of the Italian flag and the aroma of heaven. Okay, this is the reveal. This generally is when we say thank you God and from the bottom of my heart, thank you God for giving me the chance to not only taste this food, but learn how to make it. And here we go. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is like, I want to thank God in heaven for tasting all of this. And you know what? Not as hard as it looks. And I've got a, a unique recipe in case you don't have all these ingredients that you can try and cook at home. So that's where we head off to next as I take this to my plate and enjoy my pranzo. Grazie, chef. Grandi piacere. Oh, allora, I get it. And you know what? I want one of these hats, but I don't. It's going to make me look like a bishop. <laughs>
No, grazie. <laughs> When we say that all roads lead to Rome, that implies that we're all on different journeys, coming from different lands and different cultures and backgrounds. But we assume that objectively when you get to Rome, we aren't different anymore. Although there is going to be difference in us, we are also together as one holy Roman Catholic and apostolic in our faith. That delicious pasta that we had at Cecilia Metella's is something that you can kind of make at home. Obviously, the ingredients are going to be a little different, but the memory will take you back because all roads lead to Rome. And who else better to have as my guest, Joan Lewis from Jones Rome. Thank you for being here. And I just want to know one thing, Joan. What, um, what brought you to Rome and how did you come to know all about how it all comes together right here? You want to know which road I used. Which to road did to, you to, use? To exactly. Exactly. Uh, I guess I came with the Via Francigena, which was used um, over many centuries by pilgrims coming from Canterbury and Paris to Rome. And Gosh, this it, is technical, huh? <laughs> it goes through Switzerland, and I studied in Switzerland okay. for one year, traveled a great deal in Europe, loved every country I visited as a student, but fell in love with Italy. Absolutely. Someday I'm I. coming back, I'm going to live here, work here. For me, it was the food. And, and <laughs> Oh, the minute we crossed the border. It, the minute we crossed the Alps so, into northern Italy, the food was the magic I mean, and, and the food here is so simple. It's just so delightful. And this pasta that we're making is going to be a version of what they make. Everyone has their own little thing. And I'm sure that if people from the restaurant is watching this, they're going to be critiquing me. But that's okay. Because it, the whole idea of all roads lead to Rome basically means there's one objective truth that we're all seeking, and we all have a different path on which we're on to, to get there. This is the one that's going to hopefully bring you back to the, the catacombs that were right around the corner from Cecilia Metella's, right? Absolutely. So we've got some regular uh, tomato sauce that is in here, and this is passata, which means it's been boiled and strained through. And we're going to add some panna. Now, this is a double cream. So healthy Do, for you. It does not get any better. It doesn't yeah. get any better than this. And, and this this cream is going to be broken down with a little bit of, they wouldn't do this, but I'm going to break it down with a little bit of white wine and a little bit of water and just let this simmer a little bit over a medium flame. Now, the road that you mentioned, Joan, I'm kind of impressed by it, actually, because... Um, because you came here from just the United States. You came by way of Switzerland, you said? Yeah. And came out here. And how long have you been here in Rome now? 33 years. 33 years. And if years. we're counting months, 33 and a half. Thir yeah, <laughs> yes, I I exactly. I love uh, it. A That's lot of years covering the Vatican, working at the Vatican for many years, uh -huh. traveling on delegations, and, and then all these wonderful years with EWTN. And, and it's almost like... The years I spent at the Vatican were the foundation for what Absolutely. I'm doing now for this new journey, yeah. which it really is. Yeah. And, and you know what? You've seen a lot of pilgrims come here, and you can see how they're all on a different spiritual level. And when they come to Rome, do you see a transformation in them? Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. They're, they are at the Sea of Peter, the Tomb of the Apostle. They go into the various basilicas. They listen to the history. They go to the catacombs. They, they the touch first it. They, 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 they actually there. can just they be there. there and see the physicality. And uh, the one story about Quo Vadis and how Peter was leaving on the Appian Way and he had to turn around because he had that experience of Christ going back into Rome. And you might know the quote better. What, G Peter asks him, Domine quo vadis? Lord, where are you going? Lord, where are and, you and, going? And, and what did Jesus say to Peter? And he a actually even asked the Lord a question. Yeah. And, and where am I supposed to be going? And the Lord said, you're searching for me. Where am I? Exactly. You'll find me where my people are suffering, where my people are. All right. Here's what we've got to do. This is cooking up beautifully. I've got to add just a whole bunch of Parmesan cheese to get this nice and, uh, nice and thick. This is actually going to finish in the oven. Again, different techniques to cook this pasta. However, uh, we're going to pull it away from the heat just so that it doesn't overcook. The, the water that we put in there, as well as, the, um, as well as the wine, will help break it down, add a little bit of mellowness to the, to the creaminess, as well as the tartness of the tomato sauce itself. And again, while everyone will have their version of it, I know that this one has worked for me, and I've had friends who had eaten at Cecilia Metella say, 
this is as good as it's gonna get in America, right? <laughs> you mean, know, and, and Father, we should tell people that one of the things that we do over here is that chunk of Parmesan you have in your hand. Yeah. We, we eat Parmesan by chunks. We I do. mean, I would do it. No, we you cut it up in little it. chunks and you serve it to people as a, as a starter. And a, and a little balsamic vinegar on there that adds this nice tartness. Awesome. I mean, this stuff right here is, yeah. is undisputed, we, we maybe the, the greatest cheese. <laughs> so a little bit of sale and a little bit of white pepper just to season this up. And um, we're gonna serve this in a unique way. So we're gonna get this mixed up. This restaurant, Chichilia Matella, is where a lot of uh, bishops, a lot of clergy go because it's a beautiful outdoor as well as indoor restaurant. And it gives guys a chance to see some really um, natural beauty. And that's kind of what we wanna do, is give people a chance to bring them back to this experience of after going to the catacombs and then the restaurant just right up the street and this pasta I think will certainly do it. What I have right now is pagliafieno which is straw uh, and, and hay. hay and that's why it has that white green kind of color to it. This spinach infusion in this green pasta is what uh, will kind of give this a nice little earthy flavor to it but ever so mild. All right, this is done. I don't want to. I don't want to get that boiling too, too much. So we're gonna get that off the heat. I'm gonna add some of this pasta to this little sauce here. And the way that the Italians do it. Oh, by the way, I parboiled it, which basically means I only boiled it halfway and then took it off the heat. In fact, I actually put this in an ice bath. It's just to stop it from cooking because it's gonna get finished cooking in the oven itself. You can see that this is simple, and I find often that uh, the Italians don't cut their pasta, but this is so much pasta for the sauce, I'm gonna commit a great Italian kitchen sin. We won't tell a soul. Please forgive me, <laughs> yes, Joe. <laughs> I'll try. All right. <laughs> oh. um, we, you know, when, when people come to Rome, like I said, they're all on a different journey and a different plane. What has been for you the shrine or the area that people just really sense, my gosh, this really touched me. This is really gonna bring me uh, to a better relationship with God. What, what would that be that you've experienced? I have to say, because now, in recent years, I live so close to St. Peter's Basilica. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, in the mornings, I just go across the street, I go in a back entrance to uh, the, uh, the Vatican City, off. and I know. <laughs> you are such a <laughs> Go to Mass in St. Peter's Square, I mean, in St. Peter's Basilica, and I find people love the Basilica, they come there by the tens of thousands. Oh, yeah. But in the early morning hours, Mass, small numbers of people, they're there for what, this is a church, this is not a museum, and they are there for Holy Mass. Sure. And one of the most beautiful is in the, um, the Chapel of the Blessed Sacrament. Oh, at the yeah, end. absolutely. And you can only go in there during the day to pray. It's closed with very heavy drapes and they put the Blessed Sacrament on the altar at the end of 8.30 Mass in the morning. Yeah. And, and that's but, something a lot of people don't see because they come to the big, humongous basilica and they're like, right. well, where's Jesus? Right. Well, there's so many tourists that the, the Mother Church almost becomes an open house for people and people of all different faiths come. But if you are willing to spend some time with the Lord and not just marvel at the beauty of the architecture, go in and to the right, generally curtains and there are guards standing. Post. Oh, they only let you in if, if, if you're going you're to gonna pray. pray. Exactly. But you know, you go inside this chapel, there can be six people, there can be 60. There is a silence that is deafening. Oh, yeah. And it is beautiful. Well, because they're beholding the most important food of all. As should be. As should case, be. Exactly. And I have to admit, there's always a general silence when people bring this screenio out, you know, the waiters bring it out, and there's like a, oh. What is that? <laughs> Especially yes, since exactly. the screenio is often served in a terracotta dish. It's a bowl that is double baked terracotta so it can take the heat. And you'll actually see indentations around it because it looks like an ashtray. And therefore, we're going to be using ashtrays. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually line this up with a little bit of butter. And uh, I'm the kind of chef that gets my hands into everything because it's just easier that way. And we're just going to basically use some butter and just go all the way around. And here's... <laughs> 
because these these little cheap ashtrays are sold everywhere. You could even make those little door prizes that they can take with you. So all you right? get to the bottom of the dish and you see images, gonna, of images of the basilica. Images of the basilica. Exactly. You know, savoring our faith. And Absolutely. This is where we savor it. That's exactly <laughs> right. And when you eat this food, you're just going to start telling stories of all of you to, with all your friends about what you saw at the catacombs and what you saw on your journey of faith. Exactly. All right. So here's what we've got to do. I am going to take just a little bit of, of, of meat Prosciutto. here, and this is prosciutto, Prosciutto. and I'm just going to just put it on the bottom. You have to put a lot on there. This is simply just going to allow you to just infuse a little bit more flavor, okay? Just on a little bottom like that, and let me actually get some tongs. This will help. I'm so glad you're doing this, because I haven't had breakfast. <laughs> no doubt. All right, let's put this all together, and this is a perfect bite size for all of the uh, the guests that have, you know, because the way they eat is basically gonna be in courses. And so this could be a nice first course and it's not so, so heavy, not so heavy at all. But this is a smaller ramekin dish that would normally be used. So I know that you're probably gonna wanna get a bigger one so that people can eat it. Um, bigger but, portions, right. Bigger portions. So what we've got is we've got this cream, we've got this all lined up put a little bit more cream right on top. And what I'm gonna do next is take just a little bit more prosciutto right on top, and then I'm gonna put it with a little bit of fresh mozzarella that's just gonna go right on top. Now the reason why I have it here in this little double dish with this little area for uh, the paper towel is because some ovens are really finicky, okay? And so what I've got to do is be very attentive to how hot this can get because I don't want the butter to curdle or burn. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit more of this delicious sauce right on top just to cover it. We are going to also grate a little bit more Parmesan cheese because a little goes a long way. Goes a long way, yeah, 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 but if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. <laughs> Add this right on top, and watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some water, and I'm going to actually put it onto this wet paper towel here. And this is just simply a technique so that the pan doesn't get so hot that it will actually burn, and this will help keep this tempered. This goes into a super hot oven, maybe for about 10, 15 minutes until things just start to uh, burn up and bubble up. And I gotta tell you, it will definitely bring you back to the flavors of Rome. A little different from how you had it, but I think, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Looks I hope so. divine. Great. Is that the right word to use on this show, right? Divine. Come in now. <laughs> <laughs> I've led so many pilgrimages here to Rome and elsewhere, and at the end of the pilgrimage, we always have a closing banquet, an, an ultima cena, a last supper of sorts, and I oftentimes go around to the tables and ask them what they are gonna take away from this pilgrimage experience. And every one of them will say things like, I have been fed spiritually, my heart has grown more, and more importantly, they will say things like, and even though I came here in one direction, I'm gonna be living my life in another direction, living my life in the direction of heaven. So the pasta is definitely, oh, it's looking beautiful. That's exactly what we want. I wanna show you what I did too with the rest of the pasta in case your family wants to eat it family style. And that is hot, so beautiful. please be careful. You'll see what I did was with this, uh, the ramekins are now ready to be plated and we're gonna have to just let it wait for just a little bit. Cause I'm gonna make a little salad, Joan, because this is what they do. They not only eat well, they eat healthy. They and do. the salad that we're gonna be making is gonna be just some regular arugula. Can you do me a favor and hand me a, a lemon, lemon as well as a couple tomatoes a here? A couple tomatoes. So just basically squeezing out some so simple. You know one of the things that I find about the roads leading to Rome is that we complicate our faith, don't we? We just complicate it. And the Roman roads, although finding our way can get kind of difficult, we, we also find, especially in their life, a simplicity that I think we need to bring back to our faith. I think there'll be plenty here. All right. Uh, you know, one of the things that... Why complicate matters, right? Why complicate matters. Exactly. And I, I know that you've experienced this with some of the people, a little bit of salt and pepper. 
when they, uh, when they experience their conversion, don't they just say, how did I not get this? Yeah, I've known so many people that, I, w or I wish someone had told me years ago, is, is what they also say, Isn't that they that had something? been able to start earlier with the right ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> we should have you on more regularly. So the little acid from the lemon is going to help kind of meld this all together with the arugula salad. Very, very simple. You can see the bright colors here. Salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, just lightly dressed. And this makes for a perfect complement side dish for our uh, little pasta, scrigno. Father, I think what I love about eating in Italy, in addition to everything you've said. Besides the fact you don't have to do the it, dishes. It is the fact that, <laughs> I have a dishwasher, you're right. Good for you. um, but the fact that when you get up from a meal, you're tremendously satisfied, but you don't walk away from the table feeling, I won't eat again for three weeks. Exactly. Wonderful ingredients, light, flavorful, and this is it. Which is one reason why we never say goodbye. We always say arrivederci, Roma, because we know that that road is never closed. It's open for all of you. I think you're gonna certainly enjoy this meal. And blessings on this food, all the work you do. Go ahead, give it a little taste test and see. I know it's not gonna be anywhere near as good as what it was, but it will hopefully bring back a memory of what Rome as is like. Cecilia Metella. Eh, Cecilia Metella, near the catacombs. And then it's hot, so please be careful. Please be careful. Buona. You won. <laughs> you won. You know what? You can learn and all the about. Is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you. You. Try these recipes at home. Just go to our website. And you could also find Joan's wonderful blog, Joan's Rome, at EWTN.com. I love it. So cheers. And as they say, remember, it's not a very good buy. It's a Rivederci because the road to Rome and Rome's faith is open for you. I love it here. Cheers, cheers. Mm -hmm.